Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Thursday, August 3rd, 2023. Today, we will recap the baseball, the FIFA. We'll look ahead to other soccer from yesterday. Look ahead to tonight and the rest of today's other soccer, WNBA. The NFL Hall of Fame games tonight, so I'll give out a pick for that. We'll do some golf, news and notes, and my best bet for today. Okay, we'll begin with baseball like we've been doing all summer long. We will go over the results from yesterday and look ahead to today's games, which I think is a smaller slate. Braves over to Angels 12 to 5. Tigers over to Pirates 6 3. Nats over to Brewers 3 2. Um, Astros over to Guardians 3 2. Padres over to Rockies 11 1. So best bet lost. Um, Mariners over to Red Sox 6 3. Marlins over to Phillies 9 8 and 12 on a walk off single by Jesus Sanchez. Um, Yankees beat the Rays 7-2. Jays over to O's 4-1. Cards over the Twins 7-3. Rangers over to White Sox 11-1. Cobbs over to Red 16-6. Royals over the Mets 4-0. Giants over the D-backs 4-2. And the Dodgers over to A's 10-1. A lot of high-scoring games yesterday. All right, so 12 o'clock today. You have the Phillies at the Marlins. Um... Michael Lorenzen making his Phillies debut against Johnny Cueto, who I tend to forget is on the Miami Marlins. Um, Phils are favored, minus 134. Marlins plus 114. Over under 8.5. Overs minus 115. Unders minus 105. Phils minus 1.5 is plus 126. Marlins plus 1.5 is minus 152. I like the over. Next, 2 o'clock, White Sox Rangers. Tukey to St. and Max Scherzer. Rangers minus 290. White Sox plus 235. Over on their 9. Overs minus 104. Unders minus 118. White Sox plus 1.5 is plus 116. Rangers minus 1.5 is minus 140. That's an interesting one. Um, Scherzer making his Rangers debut. Um, I like over 5.5 runs for Rangers plus 102. I, I'm not a big Tukey to St. fan. Um... Mets Royals. Royals going for the sweep of the Mets. Carlos Carrasco, Brady Singer. Royals minus 116. Mets minus 102 over under 9.5. Overs minus 104. Unders minus 118. Mets minus 1.5 is plus 158. Royals plus 1.5 is minus 192. So Mets favored on the run line. Royals favored on the money line. I like the over. 3 o'clock. O's Jays. Jack Flaherty and Kevin Gossman. Blue Jays going for the split. Jack Flaherty's making his Orioles debut. Jays minus 168. O's plus 142. Over under 8. Overs minus 105. Others minus 115. O's plus 1.5 is minus 146. Jays minus 1.5 is plus 122. I like the under. I think Flaherty will pitch well today. As will Gossman. The ex-Oriole. 345. You have the D-backs at the Giants. Brendan. F that. And... Scott Alexander. Giants minus 130. D-backs plus 110. Over under 8.5. Overs minus 120. Unders minus 102. D-backs plus 1.5 is minus 182. Giants minus 1.5 is plus 150. That's a hard one. FAT's been really bad for Arizona when he's been pitching for them this season. Going over 4.5 giant runs at minus 104. I think that's an easy pick. 7.15 on Fox. Astros, Yankees, Christian Javier, Clark Schmidt. So we got two games on Fox, and I think the majority of the country is seeing Astros, Yanks. Yanks are slight favorites, minus 112. Astros, minus 104, over under 8.5. Overs, minus 122. Unders, even money. Astros, minus 1.5 is plus 152. Yanks, plus 1.5 is minus 184. Astros favored on the run line. Yankees favored on the money line. I am going to go with... Ooh, that's hard because both teams under total runs is overjuiced. I'm going to go full game under eight and a half at even money then. I think that's a good play. Um, The other game on Pox is Pirates Brewers. So pretty much every market except for Pittsburgh and Milwaukee will probably get Yankee Strohs. 
Mitch Keller and Adrian Hauser. And you would think Joe Davis and company will be at Yanks, Astros, and then the B team will be at the Brewers and the Pirates, whoever that is. Like the Gold, Aaron Goldsmith, or it's probably going to be Brian Anderson, the Brewers announcer. He'll probably be there. Matt Fasturgeon. And then it's going to be Joe Davis with John Smoltz and Ken Rosenthal. And then Pirates, Brewers, I'm going to guess it's either Matt Fasturgeon or Brian Anderson with Tom Verducci. But I would not rule out Fast Surgeon with the A team and then Brian Anderson here because maybe Joe Davis is like kind of taking a, a break, getting ready for college football or doing Dodgers or whatever. Um, Brewers minus 130, Pittsburgh plus 110 over under 8.5. Over is minus 122, and there's even money. Pittsburgh plus 1.5 is minus 184. Brewers minus 1.5 is plus 152. Um, so Mitch Keller, after the trade deadline's coming on, is still on the Pirates. Um, but I'm not an Adrian Hauser fan, so I'm going over four and a half pirate runs at plus 118. 745, Twins Cardinals. Sonny Gray and Matthew Lipitor. Um, Twins minus 132, cards plus 112 over on their nine, minus with Tiny Trey. Twins minus one half is plus 125, cards plus one half is minus 150. I like full game on there. Eight o'clock. Reds, Cubs. The Cubs going for the series win. I think the Reds beat them on... Yeah, the Reds beat them Monday. Cubs won the next two. Cubs going for the series win. Reds going for the split. Luke Weaver against Jamison Tyon. Cubs minus 164. Reds plus 138. Over under 10 and a half. Over is minus 115. Others minus 105. Reds plus 1 half is minus 137. Cubs minus 1 half is plus 114. Here's where I would take the over. Both these guys have been terrible this season, so I like the over. 9.30, Mariners Angels. Brian Wu and Shohei Otani. The show facing the Mariners. Angels minus 154. Mariners plus 130. Over under 8.5. Over is minus 102. And there's minus 120. Mariners plus 1.5 is minus 156. Angels minus 1.5 is plus 130. I like the over. Wu's kind of regressed a little bit. And then last but not least, Ace Dodgers. J.P. Sears and Julio Urias. Dodgers minus 295, A's plus 240, over under 8.5, over is minus 120, under is minus 102. A's plus 1.5 is plus 114, Dodgers minus 1.5 is minus 137. Overs over juiced. Um, Urias has been bad this year by his standards, but I'm not the biggest fan of J.P. Sears, although um, he has shown flashes but I don't trust the ace bullpen. I'm going over five and a half Dodger runs at plus 104. Okay, next to the docket is FIFA World Cup. We have a couple of games that took place. This morning is the last two games of group play. We'll do knockout round on tomorrow's podcast. Because the knockout round begins Saturday. So we'll do Saturday, Sunday, Monday knockout games on tomorrow's podcast. All right. So South Korea and Germany, 1-1 draw. Um, Korea, 0-1-2. Germany, 1-1-1. Goal scored by Korea's Cho So Hyun in the sixth minute and Alexandra Pop in the 42nd minute for Germany. And then Morocco defeats Colombia 1-0. Morocco's goal was scored by Anissa Lamari in the 49th minute. So the knockout round. Group A, you have Switzerland and Norway. So New Zealand does not make it in its home uh, in some of the like home area. Because it's Australia. Austria makes it, though, with Nigeria. Nigeria was a big surprise in Group B, in my opinion. Canada and Ireland out. Group C. 
Japan and Spain. So good on Japan for yet again doing their thing and defying expectations. Group D is England and Denmark. Group E, the Netherlands and United States. So U.S. doesn't even win the group. What a disgrace. But they're lucky that they're 1-2-0 because they, they could have easily lost to Portugal in that last game. But United States still has time to ride the ship, to be fair. Group F, uh, France and Jamaica make it. Group G, Sweden and South Africa. Group H will be Colombia and Morocco. So Germany does not make it. And neither does Korea. I was right about uh, Germany not making it and being a disappointment. But Brazil's been a major disappointment. And so there's a couple, obviously, in the United States, although they made the knockout round. Um, and um, obviously, Nigeria making the knockout round to surprise. England, Denmark, you knew was going to make it. Uh, J- like I said, Japan continues to be good. Canada disappointed. New Zealand disappointed. Um, group G, Argentina, I thought could have potentially made a run, but they didn't. So, um, knockout round's going to be a lot of fun, and it all begins bright and early on Saturday morning. All right, on to the other soccer, um. We will talk about results and look ahead to anything going on tonight. We'll start with the League's Cup. Um, So, Houston, Pachuca, 0-0 draw, but Houston advances 5-3 on penalties. Um, So, Houston moves on. Um, Dallas over Mazelton, 2-1. Miami over Orlando, 3-1. And LAFC kills Juarez, 7-1. We have a loaded slate tonight. 8 o'clock. You have Unam and Querétaro. So, um, Unam won East Group 2, and Querétaro was your East 1 group runners up. For um, these games here, because it's obviously interesting for the podcast, and something could pop up to the point where I'll consider it for uh, best bet. Um, so, Pumas is minus one ten. Clara Taros plus two fifty. Drop plus two fifty. Going with Pumas. Unam at. Minus one ten. So that's that. And then the Battle of New York. How about this? Eight o'clock Red Bulls NYC FC from Red Bull Arena. I did not pick I don't think I picked the Red Bulls or NYC FC. I picked NYCFC to make it through, but I don't remember if I... I don't think I picked the Red Bulls. Obviously, NYCFC came in second in East 3, and Red Bulls won East Group 4. That's going to be a great game. Red Bulls are favored, plus 110. NYCFC is plus 230. The draw is plus 210. I think this comes down to kick, so I'm going with the draw plus 210. Great rivalry. Odd lost New England. New England came in second in East Group 4, and lost one. East Group 3. Um, Atlas is plus 230. New England's plus 105. The draw is plus 230. I did have Atlas winning the group, and I had New England winning East Group 4, but I ended up being the Red Bulls. Um, hmm. This is a tough one, but I like the Revolution at plus 105. Also at 8 o'clock, the Philadelphia Union hosting D.C. United. Union won East Group 2. D.C. United won, or came in second in East Group 2. The Union are 
Monsters favorites, minus 185. DC United's plus 420 draws 3-1. to one. The Union better freaking win if they're, minor, if they're just under 200. Um, I am going to go, ooh, kind of like over 3.5 goals, plus 174, like that the Union have kind of got in their... Uh, Uh, they're kind of scoring touch back in that uh in group play there. So I like that over. I think that could be like a three one Union final. Um, Charlotte cruises at eight thirty. That's gonna be on Fox Sports One. Personally, I think the Battle of New York should be on Fox Sports One or the Union's game, but um against DC United. So um, I think uh Charlotte cruises will got a lucky draw there again on Fox Sports One. Uh. Charlotte won South Group 4, and Cruz Azul came in third in South Group 3. Um, Charlotte's plus 185, Cruz Azul plus 120, draws plus 240. Um, Charlotte's home, and they're a pretty significant underdog. Um, and... I did not have either um team making a run. I had both of those teams out, Charlotte and um Cruz Azul. So both of those teams I think have exceeded expectations. Um I like Cruz Azul plus one twenty. And last but not least, 10.30, Leon saw, like, this game is also on Fox Sports 1, and it should be because Leon obviously won CONCACAF, and I know we, like, Salt Lake, they're a team that uh, could make a little bit of a run. Obviously, Salt Lake um, came in second in West 2, and Leon won West 3. And I didn't have Leon advancing amazingly enough, so good on them. Uh, Leon's plus 175, Real Salt Lake's plus 135, the draw's plus 230. Um, Real Salt Lake's home. I think this is where Leon's run comes to an end. A lot of fatigue. I think Real Salt Lake gets it done, plus 135. Um, there is a lot of... Um, qualifying for Euros Conference League and the Champions League going on. So we'll just do results and look ahead to slates. And then by the way, the um, Emirates Cup, it was a uh, 1-1 draw, but Arsenal won 5-4 on penalties. And in club friendlies, um, Bayern over Liverpool 4-3, Napoli over Girona. I'm sorry, that was a 1-1 draw. Stayed Rennes over Nottingham Forest 5 0. Wolfhampton over Luton. Or, I'm sorry, that's a 0 0 draw. Bayer over Martial 2 1. AS Roma over SC. Farinace 4 2. Juventus over Real Madrid 3 1. Chelsea and Borussia 1 1 draw. Atletico Madrid and Real Sociedad 0 0 draw. And Sevilla over Real Batiste 1 0. All right. Champions League qualifying. Um, very quickly, um, Dynamo Zagreb over FC Astana 2 0. And then Dynamo advances 6 0 on aggregate. Um, FK Karabag and Rakow to Stawa 1 1 draw. To Stawa advances 4 3 on, at, on aggregate. Um, BK Hacken and KL Klausvik 3 3 draw. But Klausvik advances 4 3 on penalties. Um, Maccabi over. Sheriff Terrace pull 4-1. That took extra time. And uh, Hoffie advances 4-2 on aggregate. Molde over HJK. Helsinki. Helsinki 2-0. Molde advances 2-1 on aggregate. Servette over Racing Genk. Um, 4-1 in penalties, but this was a 2-2 draw. And Servette advances. FC Copenhagen over Breda Bilk. 6-3, and Copenhagen advances 8-3 on aggregate, and Galatasaray over Zalgiris 1-0, and Galatasaray advances 3-2 on aggregate. Um, 
Conference League qualifying, AEK, Lavranza, and Torpedo. 1-1 one, one draw at an AEK advances fourth round aggregate. F91 over Jazeera 2-1. And Jazeera advances 3-2 on aggregate. All right, USL from yesterday. Um, Loudon and Memphis 0-0 nil, nil draw. League 1 Union over Lexington 2-0. And then today is very busy. And then we had a friendly final, by the way. PSG over Gian... Book 3-0. And then going on right now, FC Basel and Tobol Costani. Basel leads 1-0 and Tobol leads 3-2 on aggregate. And this is um, Conference League. So 11 o'clock, Pionic and Calamar. Pionic leads 2-1 on aggregate. Santa Coloma and FK Sujeska. Sujeska leads 2-0 on aggregate. 11.30, FC Spartak and FK Auto, they're tied on aggregate. 12 o'clock. Octobi Lento and Torpedo Kudesi. And Lento leads 4-1 on aggregate. Um, Benant and FC Ferul. FC Ferul leads 3-2 on aggregate. Dynamo Tbilisi and Hamrin Spartan. Spartans lead 2-1 on aggregate. Kono Zalgirius and Lech Ponzin. Ponzin leads 3-1 on aggregate. Cups. Copio and Derry City. Derry leads 2-1 on aggregate. Um, Penevzi's and Hapul Bayer. Hapul leads 1-0 on aggregate. Pogon Szezin and Linfield. Pogon leads 5-2 on aggregate. Sabah FK and Rigas Futbola Sokola. Sabah leads 2-0 on aggregate. Um, Zellinger's aggregate. Uh, Salazar Zagi TE and Osajek. Osajek leads 1 0 on aggregate. That's 1245. Um, we have a lot more, but we really don't have time to uh, go over all of them. So I'm just going to go through some uh, ones of no 1 o'clock. Dilagori and Vorskla. Vorskla leads 2 1 on aggregate. Um, Rosenborg and Crusaders are tied on aggregate. Um, two o'clock, AGF, Aris and Club Brugge. Brugge leads three 0 on aggregate. Hamarby and FC Twente. FC Twente leads one 0 on aggregate. And two forty five, FC Luz Ern and Desjardins IF. Luzerne leads 2-1 on aggregate. And that's really it among notables for today for the uh, Conference League. All right, so now move on to the WNBA. Um, we will um, recap the loan game from yesterday, and we'll look ahead to today's late. Wings over to Storm, 76-65. The Wings are now 15-11. Seattle drops to a dismal 6-20. And we have another loan game tonight on Prime Video at 10 o'clock. It's the Dream and the Mercury. The Mercury have been very disappointing. The Dream have been okay. And um, the Dream are giving 7.5 totals, 163 and a half. Um, I like the over. I think that a lot of the WNBA teams have been scoring high lately, and the games have been high scoring, so... I'm going to go over 163.5 between the Dream and the Mercury, and I think the spread is kind of on point. Alrighty, the moment you've been waiting for. NFL Hall of Fame game tonight, 8 o'clock on NBC. Mike Tirico, Chris Collinsworth, and I believe it's going to be Catherine Tappan. It's going to be a very interesting game. And I do like following the preseason. I don't do projections for the preseason. But I do like the bet on it. I do not think we will see the big names today. It's Zach Wilson going to be going for the Jets. And I assume starting a quarterback for the 
um, Cleveland Browns tonight will be Joshua Dobbs, the former Steelers quarterback. So that would is. No, no, it looks like it's um, going to be um, Kellen Mondin, former UCLA quarterback, Dorian Thompson Robinson. And then for the Jets, Zach Wilson is going to be getting the start. And. And then we'll probably see Tim Boyle after Zach Wilson. Um, so this is a good spot for, like, rookies to play and, like, veterans that are trying to make the team. We might see former first round of Akai Beckton in there. Joe Tipman will play probably for the Jets. Um, in terms of receivers, uh, maybe Gar- I don't know if we'll see Garrett Wilson. I wouldn't risk that one. Um, so, and defensively, I really am unsure. Maybe Will McDonald will see the Jets' first rounder that many people criticize the selection. Receivers for the Browns, I think we'll see Cedric Tillman, who they drafted this year. I think we're going to see Dewan Jones. Like I said, I know we'll see DTR. Um, Sayaki Ika, we'll see. Um, Cam Mitchell, we will not see Miles Garrett, I don't think. Maybe we see um, Greg Newsom. So, I'm interested to see the line. But I'm just trying to think of like notable players you may see tonight. Um so the Jets are a one and a half point favorite. Total is thirty three and a half. Um, I like the Browns. Um, this is obviously not going to be a Fab Five pick or anything, but uh, it's obviously the first pick of the two thousand twenty three season preseason edition. So I'm going to take the Browns getting the points. I think that um, DTR will do some things with his legs. Um, and I think that Cedric Tillman will have a big game for the Browns. So I like the Browns getting the one and a half against the Jets, and I am willing to take him at plus 115 on the money line. All right, now move on to golf. We will go over the early leaderboard for the Windham Championship. Your leader right now with a score of six under is Stefan Yeager. In second, five under Scott Sloan. Third with four under is Matt Wallace. Tied for fourth with two under is Eric Cole, Tail, Tanner Ghini, Brendan Todd, Adam Scott, Robert Streb, HK Bihita, um, Taylor Moore, Sam Ryder, Max McGreevy, Rory Sabatini, and MJ Doffey. Tied for 15th and one under is a pretty big group too. Chasing Hadley, Harry Higgs, Sam Burns, Chester V, Joaquin Herman, Trey Molinax, Kevin Strillman, Justin Thomas, Shane Lowry, Joel Dahman, Davis Riley. Brant Snecker, J.J. Spawn, Jimmy Walker, Nate Lashley, Bryce Garnett, Cam Percy, Austin Cook, Troy Merritt, Sicheng Du. And by the way, Merritt's tied for 34th and even with Russell Knox, Dylan Wu, Brett Horschel, Brandon Gay, Mackenzie Hughes, Nate Hardy, Peter Malnati, Doug Gim, Thomas Dietrich, Davis Lipsky, Hank Lebiota, Matthias Schwab, Nicholas Hojard, Charlie Hoffman, Estelanzo Goya, Ludwig Aberg, Yuanya Chun, Sam Bennett. Notables, 53rd with one over. Brandon Wood, Jason Duffner, Michael Kim, Nicholas Ecabria, Chad Ramey, Kramer Hickok, Callum Tarrant, Ben Taylor, Ryan Palmer, C.T. Pond, C.A.U. is tied for 64th with two over. Alex Badley, Gyungu Lee, Tyson Alexander, Davis Thompson. Tied for 71st with three over. Dylan Lingworth, Gary Woodland, Adam Long. And B.O. Hossler, 75th with four over Harry Hall. Um, tied for 76th with five over Ryan Moore, Stuart Sink. 78th with six over Harrison Endicott. And then the rest is to come this afternoon. All right, now move on to the news and notes for today. Um, we talked about the Hall of Fame game. That's going to be a lot of fun. We do have um, a lot of big... Um, Soccer games tonight, whether it's FIFA coming up Saturday or League's Cup tonight. We have a loaded League's Cup, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, 
So, um, we'll start with baseball. Um, Eduardo Rodriguez wanted contract updates as he asked for financial and contractual enhancements before invoking the no-trade clause to the Dodgers. And like I said, I think um, the Dodgers are a trade deadline loser, but they're not entirely at fault. And then Erod also says, I'm just thinking about my future and my family. Nothing against the Dodgers. Um, Steve Cohen met with Peter Alonzo ahead of the trade deadline to address rumors and future. We hope we work things out. That's not a good line. It's not. I mean, that's another name I could have thrown in there in terms of off-season trade candidates if the Mets really want to blow it up and rebuild from scratch. Then they would have to trade Alonzo. Um, Bo Bichette on the injured list with the knee injury. We speculated that was going to be the case. He is right. Patellar tendonitis. We'll see how long he's out for. But it's a big loss for Toronto nonetheless. Marcus Stroman on the 15-day injured list with right hip inflammation. Retroactive to August 1st. That makes sense to why he struggled in the month of July. That injury must have been lingering. And that is a big loss for the Cubs as they really have turned it on of late. This is very sad. Liam Hendricks underwent Tommy John surgery and is expected to be out until 2025. That's awful. Because that's just really sad considering what he went through to get back to pitching. And it's just really bad luck. I feel so bad for him. But that is a big loss for the Chicago White Sox, nevertheless. Um, um, So, Steve Cohen got candid with Max Scherzer. And, um... Cohen said he couldn't promise they'd be all in on free agents in 2024, which is crazy. The Marlins welcomed James or Jake Berger with five dollar burgers last night. So that was pretty cool. Um, Domingo Herman goes on the restricted list as he is. Um getting treatment for alcohol abuse. So he's out for the season. That's just very unfortunate for the Yankees. Hopefully Herman gets the help he needs. Um, The one shiny moment of the Yankee season was brought to you by that same individual who threw the perfect game back at the end of June. So he thought that the perfect game would have gotten his season and the Yankee season going. It turned out it had or didn't. So, um, hopefully Herman gets well soon. Um, it's just an unfortunate situation for the Yankees as Nestor Cortez comes back and everyone thought that he was going to replace Luis Severino in the rotation, who's been terrible this season. And now he's replacing Herman, who is obviously done for the season. After Wander Franco hit a... Solo shot into the second deck off of Garrett Cole last night. A fire Cashman chant broke out at Yankee Stadium. There are fire Cashman chants going on Tuesday night as well after the lack of trade activity. After something bad happens, after every guy gives up a run, after every hit into a double play, you're going to be hearing fire Cashman chants. That is the state of the Yankee fan right now, especially the younger generation. And um, those fire cashman chants went away because the Yankees ended up rallying and winning that game last night. But um, they're not going to go away for the rest of the season, for sure. Um, NFL expected to punish Alvin Kamara for some portion of the season due to 2022 arrests. 
I'm interested to see how long that will be. Obviously, that is a big deal. Um, Chiefs rookie tight end Isaiah Gavings was in shock after his first practice with Patrick Mahomes. And there's a video of him, like, in awe. Johnny Manziel opened a Texas A&M bar as um, he is obviously entering a new business venture. So uh, good for Johnny football. Michigan State debuts new locker room as they have a $78 million Tom Izzo football building, which is looking good so far. All right, so the Big Ten is eyeing Pac-12 schools. Oregon, Washington, Cal, and Stanford in play as Big Ten officials have discussed expanding to 18 or 20 teams. That's ridiculous. They shouldn't have tried to acquire the two um, California, Southern California schools in the first place, obviously SC and UCLA, because that, obviously the Pac-12 is in limbo. It's a sinking ship. Colorado's off to the Big 12. Utah's probably going to follow. And who's going to be left? The two Arizona schools? Insane. And I've said over and over again how I feel how the conferences should be aligned. Like, those West Coast schools, those four that I just listed, plus SC and UCLA, the two Arizona schools, and Oregon State, and I'm missing somebody. Um, obviously, um, I'm, I am blanking on somebody. Who is it? It's those four, SC, UCLA, um, Oregon State, the two Arizona schools. Those nine plus one more, I need to think of that. Oh, um, Wazoo. That should be the Pac-12. The Big 12 should be... Colorado, Utah, BYU, Houston, Texas, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Baylor, TCU, Kansas, Kansas State. West Virginia should be in the ACC. I think Cincinnati arguably should be in the ACC too. With Clemson, Florida State, Carolina, NC State, Boston College. You could talk me in the Rutgers being in the bit in the ACC. That's probably where they belong to. Syracuse, Wake, Duke, obviously, and then obviously the Big Ten should be Penn State. You could talk me into Pitt being in the Big Ten, with obviously Ohio State, Indiana, Notre Dame. You can make a case to be in the Big Ten. Like do it like a ge- geographical style, and I think that would be better for the sport and then potentially move Iowa State to the Big Ten too because like I said this should be like based on geographics um six or center Montrezl Harrell has a torn ACL and meniscus after undergoing MRI for right knee swelling that's brutal he uh, backup center for MB big loss for them although I believe Paul Reed is still on the team and he Kind of showed flashes the last several years. Giannis had a uh, Twitter clap back. As he had a really good response to a trolling tweet for using him on a Google Pixel. That's funny. Good on Giannis for defending himself. Ducks extent to- uh, Troy Terry. A uh, seven-year deal. $49 million altogether. With the Ducks ahead of arbitration, so really good job by the Anaheim Ducks extending an asset and an up-and-coming player in Troy Terry. And non-sports news, um, the gunman who killed 11 worshippers at a Pittsburgh synagogue in 2018 has been sentenced to death. Wow. Um, took, a, took a little bit for that to be resolved. 2018, we're in 2023 now. So that's the uh, non-sports news that popped on my uh, news feed today. All right, last but not least, my best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Um, So, best bet today. um, 
I have a few in mind. And um I I'm going to lay a quarter unit on a baseball pick that I saw and was like, okay, I could talk myself into that. And the number went down to 10. I'm just banking on um, this red-hot offense still hitting well and their opposition to uh, put up some runs, too. And that's Cubs-Reds. I'm going to go over 10. I'm going to lay a quarter unit on it. Over 10, Reds-Cubs best bet of the day all right so that's it for the podcast i'll be back tomorrow recapping everything we've had to all the fifa this weekend the rest of the league's cup we have going on over the weekend more soccer WNBA. we have nascar this weekend too just cup and xfinity if i'm not mistaken and obviously a lot more to do hope you guys have a great day everyone